We're in the midst of fire season here in the Northern Hemisphere and the season just keeps getting longer and longer on both ends. It's starting earlier, it's ending later. And now it's kind of becoming very well known. I mean, it's always been very well known across the US, but it's becoming more impactful, I guess, across the US. As we saw, was it in June this year of 2023, the East Coast really got to see the effects of severe wildfires. So the East Coast of Canada was on fire and that has like even still as i'm filming this has led to poor air quality for several weeks now in the eastern united states from like illinois all the way to new york maine east coast down to like kentucky tennessee like huge air pollution problems over there now because of the wildfires so the fires don't just impact the people in the area where the fires are burning they're impacting everyone fires have their place and they do have their importance but that doesn't mean we should be starting them willy-nilly so let's practice good fire safety this fire season and all year, every year. And we'll be talking more about that in this video. Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. And again, welcome back where I talk about all sorts of things zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste, making low waste accessible for everyone. And of course, sprinkling in some leave no trace here and there like today's video. We're talking about leave no trace principle number five, be careful with fire. I love leave no trace. I love being outdoors. I love low waste. So I love being able to incorporate it all into videos like this. If you like videos about leave no trace, let me know which topics about leave no trace you'd like me to cover in the next few videos. First off, fires can be good. I hinted about that in the intro. If done correctly, fires can be a good thing. Now, I don't want to whitewash it. I don't want to say like just a couple decades ago, white people, white land managers created this and discovered it for themselves. No, they saw indigenous people doing this for hundreds of years and learned from that. They learned that, you know, certain species survive and even thrive in fire conditions. The forest is a much healthier ecosystem when fires are introduced safely, right? The ash, can lead to good fertilizer. It can open up clearings for plants that need a lot of sunlight to, to grow. A lot of conifer cones actually need fire in order to be even opened up. Sequoia cones, Monterey pine, lodgepole pine, a lot of other pines in California, a fire ridden area. A lot of the species there need fires not only to survive, but to even germinate and thrive. Prescribed burns can also prevent massive fires from happening in the future. When we were in Sequoia last year, they talked about how they did a prescribed burn around the Sequoia Grove. Was it Sequoia? It might have been Yosemite. They did a prescribed burn and then like a year later there was a wildfire that approached the last year's prescribed burn area and the fire stopped there. Like it literally creates a fire barrier. So prescribed burns can be good. But of course there's a time and place for prescribed burns. That, does just, that doesn't mean that we should just leave our fires unattended. That doesn't mean we should just be using fireworks out in the middle of the woods. That we should be negligent with our fires. That is why we have people, our firefighters, our wildland managers, indigenous people. They're the ones who are responsible for that, not us average people, okay? And of course fire serves a purpose. Fire keeps us warm when we're camping. It can cook our food, it can purify our water, and it can also just be a lot of fun to hang around with. So I'm not saying that we need to ban fires and we all need to stop using fires. We need to be doing fires responsibly. So our first one today, which has got to be the easiest one, is put your fire out completely. And maybe it's not that easy because if you pour water over a fire and the flames are extinguished, but there's still hot embers, your fire technically is out. There's no more flames, but those hot embers can pose a risk later on. Your fire needs to be no longer smoking, no longer smoldering and also cool. Don't go touching embers, hold your hand a few inches above it to see if it's still radiating heat. If it is, pour more water on it. If you need to put it out quickly because you're leaving your campsite or whatever, use water and get it put out completely fast. But if you're chilling around your fire and you're you're not needing it for warmth you can just sit there and watch the fire burn out completely it's fun to just hang around fun to watch and then you can save water by not having to pour water on it until the very end because again it does need to be cool all the way you need to pour water not only till the flames are extinguished but the embers are no longer burning red from there it might look like it's out so get a good sized stick a shovel or a pitchfork stir it around and see if there's any more hot embers underneath that pile of ash Chances are there probably are a couple still hanging out in there so pour more water on it keep an eye out for smoke keep your hand above it above it, not on it, to see if there's any more heat left. But why is this a big deal? And that's because hot embers can recatch. If it's a windy day, the hot embers can blow out. The hot embers can re-spark and the sparks can go blow out. Something could fall into the fire that's flammable and it could recatch. If you just barely put your fire out and then you, you know, leave your campsite and then it reignites, you're still technically responsible, even though you weren't there, but because you did not put out your fire all the way. So definitely always put it out all the way to reduce any risk of the fire spreading. Please don't litter your cigarette butts. Again, when we were in the Sierra last summer, we did Yosemite, Kings Canyon, and Sequoia. 
I found so many cigarette butts in the middle of a no burn ban, a burn ban. And of course this is physical litter as well. Cigarette butts are not just paper, they do contain plastic, so they are polluting. Animals could eat them and get sick. But of course, if you throw a smoldering cigarette butt out of your car into a meadow, into a forest, especially during dry season, it could easily catch. Don't litter and also don't pose this fire risk by not littering your cigarette butts. Wait until you find a cigarette butt disposal. Don't put it in the trash either because unless it's fully out and fully cold because again a cigarette butt can catch stuff on fire so what you can do actually is just take a metal can like an old metal Folgers coffee can and then you can keep that in your car and have your own cigarette butt disposal that won't catch on fire I'm not sure if you can hear it because my mic might be good enough but we're also in an RV I think you might have just heard that it's windy today so today would be a terrible day to start a fire and if you're like why is that because of the wind <laughs> Hopefully this goes without saying, but on a windy day, a spark, an ember, a piece of a leaf, a piece of a stick, whatever in your fire that's burning could blow out of it and start a fire elsewhere. And again, it doesn't even have to be the flames that are blowing. It could be the sparks as well. Similar to that, please don't start fires during dry season. I already hinted at that, but please don't. Those rules are in place for a reason. We're already in a burn ban in Spokane while I'm filming this um, in early July. So they're happening again. Burn bans are happening earlier and earlier because of droughts, climate induced. And again, burn bans are in place for a reason. And that reason is not to ruin the fun, it's to save lives because when conditions are very, very dry, fires spread even quicker than normal. Because if you are if you catch fire in a very moist like spring forest, it's very hard for the moist wood and the moist bushes and foliage on the ground to catch because there's a lot of water. But in the late part of the summer, when there's not a lot of water around, very, very easy for all that dry stuff to catch and spread. Dry grass, shrubs, leaves, like underbrush, dry trees, they are all susceptible and the drier it is, the quicker that it will all go up. And again, this comes back to proper forest management and prescribed burns. By prescribing burning all of the dry underbrush, it's preventing fires from spreading later on in the dry season because there's going to be less dry materials catch later on. Now, if you still need to cook while you're camping during dry season, what you can do is use a gas stove. Here's a quick video of our gas stove. It's just a little single guy, but I've also known people who use like the Coleman grills, like some bigger car camping grills, small burners, instead of using a fire or a grill during burn bans. Next tip, don't watch fireworks, period. <laughs> but don't watch fireworks during burn bans. I don't want to ruin anybody's fun by saying fireworks should be banned, but I kind of think that. And you can learn more about why fireworks are bad for the environment in this video, not just for fires, but for pollution in all the senses, water pollution, air pollution, physical pollution, health risks to us and the animals. And especially when it's dry, don't do fireworks. Uh, I, I believe that falls under the burn ban in most areas because guess what a firework is? It's exploding fire. If I can't have a campfire, why should I be allowed to launch explosives? Hopefully you get the point. It's really just a recipe for disaster. They are meant to catch stuff on fire and they will catch other stuff on fire too, especially if it's dry. And again, while we're talking about fireworks, don't launch fireworks on a windy day too. It's the same with having a campfire on a windy day. Your fireworks can get really out of control in the wind and spread far and wide and catch a lot of stuff on fire, potentially. And again, while we're at it, more fireworks tips. Don't launch fireworks over meadows, over trees, over structures, because that can just prevent further damage as well. If you have to launch fireworks for whatever reason, try to do it like on a tennis court, a concrete pad of some sort, a parking lot, something like that to prevent the spread of potential fires. This next one is a lesson we probably should have taken more seriously at my childhood home in Ohio. That is to not light fires under trees or structures. We didn't ever light them near structures, but we had a giant fire ring. It was, probably, it was probably 10 feet across. This thing is massive. My dad and my brother are a little bit of pyromaniacs. Anyway, we had four big oak trees on the corners of our little fire area and their branches would hang over because you know they're trying to find the light and every summer they would lose all their leaves in the middle because guess why they were burning whether they were physically burning from the sparks getting up there or it was just too hot for them to live up there anymore regardless this could have been a recipe for disaster thankfully ohio is very humid all year long we never have things like burn bands or dry seasons and it's very rare to even have droughts in ohio at least back in the day so it was never really that big of a deal. But say you live somewhere, you know, Eastern Washington, California, Nevada, Utah, whatever, and you do have dry seasons, you do have burn bans. Your trees are going to be way drier than trees in humid areas. So doing something like that is a bad, bad, bad idea. It could catch the whole tree on fire and then it could easily spread to other things, especially in the dry season. You shouldn't be having fires anyways. Other stuff can just spread really quickly. This even goes for having fires over roots of trees. Now again, a tree that is perfectly healthy and alive its roots probably won't catch on fire because that's where most of the water is being moved. But if you start a fire over a dead tree, those roots are also 
dead and dry. And you could catch an entire tree on fire by lighting its roots on fire. Be wary with that. And of course, don't start fires near structures just for human safety as well. But again, because it could spread if it's near you know, one house here, one house here, one house here, or several barns in a row, or a barn next to a forest, whatever it may be. Just light fires in nice open areas. Don't leave an unattended fire for any period of time. Whether you're going to the bathroom or you're you're tucking into your campsite for the night, your, your sleeping bag, don't leave a fire unattended. Because you never know when the wind might pick up, when something might fall in, when an animal or a child might get close to that fire. So leave another adult in charge of your fire while you run to the bathroom or you run to go get some s'more stuff or whatever. But especially don't leave your fire unattended all night long. Don't be like, okay, time for bed. Fire's still roaring or maybe there's some hot embers left. I'm gonna tuck into my camp, in my camp bag camp bag. I'm going to get into my sleeping bag and go to sleep. Don't do that. Again, you never know when the conditions might change and something might pick up and that could just end in your own detriment as well. And of course, this should also go without saying, always have water on standby. We have this like, I don't know, five gallon little water pour. We used to when we had a house with space that we would take camping with us. We would always bring it full so we could either, you know, fill it up for ourselves to drink or put our fires out. Always use fire rings, no matter what. Whether there's already an established metal fire ring at your campsite or there's nothing around, build one with rocks. Because again, you never know what might catch, what might spread. It prevents fires from spreading. If you don't know what a fire ring is, it's something that's unflammable that the fire can stay contained in. And if you do have to make one out of rocks, pick larger rocks. I'm talking like the size of your hand or bigger. You don't want like little pebbles. That's probably not gonna work very well. And of course, don't make them out of flammable materials. Don't make a fire ring out of more sticks. And speaking of that, don't make your fires bigger than necessary. Don't make your fires hang over the edge of your fire ring. Don't make an entire huge bonfire if you're just trying to roast a couple marshmallows. Because the beauty of a fire is it'll keep going as long as you feed it. So if you think like, oh no, I might get cold later. I need to make a big fire. You can make an average sized fire and then just keep adding wood to it as long as you need to stay warm. If you see an unattended fire, put it out or report it. And I have two specific examples for this. And again, this goes for if you see a smoldering smoking embers or you see a full roaring fire, put it out or report it if it's something that you think you can handle. If it is an emergency or something huge like a wildfire, call 911, call the fire department, call the non-emergency line. If it is an emergency, call the emergency line. Our first one we stumbled across was in Lake Wenatchee State Park. We've stumbled across so many smoldering fire fires in our time hiking and stuff, but this is the most recent. We saw smoke and we're like, oh my gosh, smoke? It's April. Why is there already smoke? So we drove around a little bit. We found it. It was just someone who had just left their camp and left their fire not out fully completely. And it wasn't just like smoking. There was like a couple hot embers left. I'm like, oh my gosh. The worst part, they were camped right next to a working water faucet. They had ample water to put it out completely. They just didn't. They are negligent and lazy and it could have ended badly. Thankfully, we and another passerby saw it, put it out completely because it was a windy day. But yeah, we just took our remaining water, poured it out, filled it up at the water spigot, poured it more on there until it was completely out. We used some snow that was nearby. That one was very easy. My next example, I was alone with the Nahi here in Spokane at a local city park and there was a full roaring fire. It was a, it was a built campfire on top of a uh, cement structure and it wasn't windy. So I wasn't worried about it, but I only had two water bottles with me. I'm like, this is not gonna cut it. I need to call somebody. And because it was an emergency, since it wasn't spreading, it was contained, it was rather small and it was on that big cement slab. I was like, I'm gonna call the non-emergency line so that nobody's panicking. I gave them a really good description about where I was, how I got there, what the fire looked like, what it was on top of, what direction it was facing, all of that. Just give them as many details as you can. And then they found it. They even called me back. So they're like, hey, we still can't find it. Can you help us a little bit more? And I helped them find it and call someone to help you out. The non-emergency line is great. You can call the fire department directly. You can call the Fish and Wildlife. You can call the BLM. You can call the Forest Service. Whoever's land you're on, call them. If you see a blazing wildfire, definitely call 911. Chances are they already know about it because of hikers, because of locals, because of fire watch people. But you can, if you don't know about it, go ahead and call and report. Better safe than sorry. And if they're like, oh yeah, we already know about it. No harm done. But if they're like, oh my gosh, we had no idea then you just saved the day. And I guess if you already, if you should probably know this, if you live in wildfire country is to like, you know, check the reports for local wildfire so that you know if you're going to be passing by one in the local ones in your area to know where not to go. And if you need to wear a mask because of air pollution and stuff. All right, our next few tips involve like vehicles and equipment of some sort. This first one is going to be in relation to off-roading. So off-roading is really fun for some people. I don't like it because it gives me migraines. You can learn more about that in my chronic illness video. Don't off-road over dry grass. Don't even park over dry grass because again, in the in the dry season and burn ban season when it's really, really dry, dry grass plus a hot engine is a recipe for disaster. I think it was in 2021, 2020. It was pretty recent. Up here in Washington and 
British Columbia and Canada, it got so hot, just the air, that trees were spontaneously combusting. So it can be the same for grass as well. If the grass gets so hot from your engine, there might not even be any sparks or anything, it could still combust. And that's not to mention your cars leak all sorts of fluids, a lot of which are flammable. So that could just encourage the spread. And same with parking, especially if you're going to be idling over some dry grass. Instead, aim for pavement, gravel, dirt, sand, Dry season goes beyond just lighting fires during dry season. It's also just we need to be responsible with all sorts and forms of heat during dry season. This next one, speaking of dry season, we're talking about welding. This one's really random and I'll explain why <laughs> I'm bringing this up in a second. So don't weld outside if you can help it. I'm not really sure about the safety of welding, but if you can weld inside, like inside of a nice metal barn or a shop, do that instead. But if you have to melt, weld outside, do it over gravel, over cement, over a driveway, something like that to prevent plants from catching on fire. And of course, don't weld on a windy day. If you didn't know, welding causes sparks. Welding is the fusing of metal. It's very, very hot and it will cause sparks. I bring this up because one of the biggest, if not the biggest fire here in Spokane about 30 years ago was started by somebody welding on a windy day and it destroyed so much of the state park here. Yeah, and it got really, really close to the city. So it, it was a very scary situation because somebody was welding on a windy day. So again, be careful with everything that you're doing that involves heat, sparks, whatever it may be, not just actual fires. And still along this line is don't use power tools during the dry season or during like the peak of the day during dry season. So I work in a state park right now where we have to do a lot of maintenance like weed whacking, mowing, etc. Now that we're getting into dry season, it's not a, a real ban that we can't weed whack all day long, but it's highly encouraged that we only weed whack if we need to in the mornings because that's when it's coolest and before it gets too hot. The risk is there all day long, but it's definitely the highest in the afternoon when it's like 90 degrees versus 70 degrees. Our equipment can overheat, which could spark, or again, the heat could cause the grass to spontaneously combust. So be careful with your power tools when you're outside during the heat and during dry season. Of course, we need to not only keep the environment safe from fires, but we need to keep ourselves safe from fires as well. This will also keep the environment safe by not playing with fire. Don't do it. Don't play with fire. I was a little bit of a pyromaniac as a kid. We would like burn sticks and stuff. If you want to like stick a stick in the fire and like watch it burn, do that within the confines of the fire ring. You can still play with fire responsibly. <laughs> That's a weird sentence. But you know, don't, don't hold up a lit stick and like swing it around and everything. Don't take it near other plants. And then especially with like kids and pets, keep them away from fires as well, of course for their safety, but for the safety of the environment as well. If a little bit of like a spark falls out of your campfire ring stomp it out real quick pour some water on it quickly blow out marshmallows that catch on fire don't like throw them and get scared that it's on fire and of course put your fires out all the way all the way not just hot embers left i mean all the way because i cannot tell you how many people i know i probably could it's not that many but like i i know a lot of people who have gotten injured from fire that wasn't really fire it was hot embers that's what injured them whether it was like a quick, you know, just a little burn from an ember or something more severe. So especially with kids and pets, put your fires out completely. Cool, no smoking, no hot embers left. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you making it all the way to the end because again, I am very passionate about zero waste. I am very passionate about the outdoors and I love combining those into these types of videos talking about leave no trace. If you missed the video from two weeks ago, we talked about why food waste is littered. You can check that video out up here and I will have linked it in the beginning, but you can check this video out as well. The very basic principles of leave no trace, which is essentially just zero waste for the outdoors. Um, so yeah, let's all work together to protect our natural places and our whole environment because wildfires aren't just, you know, wildfires don't know borders. The wildfires in Canada are affecting us in the United States. A wildfire can not only start in a forest, it can spread and reach cities. So like fires can become very dangerous very fast, which is why we need to be careful with them. Let's enjoy them, but let's be responsible with them. Let me know what other topics you would like me to cover about Leave No Trace because again, very passionate about it. I will talk about Leave No Trace all day long. If you have any specific questions, let me know. And if I missed any good fire prevention tips, let us know those down below as well. If you know anybody that would benefit from this video, any campers, hikers, off-roaders in your life, send this video to them so that they can be responsible with fire as well. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time. I'll see you in next week's video. What are we talking about next week? I think we're talking about zero waste hobbies. Speaking of hiking, let's see, let's see. So yeah, next week we're talking about eco hobbies. Um, I have a lot of eco hobbies, hiking, video games, reading, Dan's got woodworking, backpacking, mountain biking. We're going to talk about all of it. Um, so join us next week. Oh, I also have another video recommendation for you. My zero waste swaps for the outdoors. You can check it out up here. But anyway, I'll see you in next week's video. Until then, remember that your small actions make a big difference in the long run. Bye, guys. Oh. Just ignore that.
Four out of five. My lips are chapped. Let's go. Yeah, that's that's the gist of that. Let's talk dry grass. Um, actually, no. 